From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And when the people became impatient on the way, and people spoke against God and against Moses, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look upon the bronze serpent and live. Moses could not have written a sermon better than what happens in Numbers chapter 21. Of course, the numbers weren't there yet in the text. It was just Hebrew and didn't even have vowel pointings at that. When I went and saw the Dead Sea Scrolls when it came to Charlotte, uh, I was right in the middle of studying Hebrew and I've never felt more insignificant than looking at the original texts to think, wow, I don't know anything. And that's good for a pastor to be humbled in, in that way and often to look at something and be able to say, I have no idea. Because my job is to look at the original text and tell you what scripture says. But in this case, you can't write a better sermon than what happens to the Israelites than this. This is a law gospel sermon that actually happened. It's not a, it's not a fairy tale. It actually happened. And so here in Mount Or, what happened was a, as, as basic thing that has, could have happened and that we can understand it Christologically, that is Christ at the center. And it's this. The people, I, I don't know if they're trying to be ironic or not, but the Israelites came and they said to Moses because they got all ornery, because they thought, hey, this life is worse than being a slave. Looks to Moses and they say, we have no food, we have no drink, and also we hate this, this loathsome food. Does that not sound like your kid? I've got, there's nothing to eat, there's nothing to drink, also the food that we have that I can eat, I don't like. Those are the children of Israel. We don't, we, there's, there's nothing to eat to eat, there's nothing to drink, and also the food that we actually have, I don't like. I mean, many times I can open the refrigerator in our house and think the same thing. There's nothing to eat whenever there's tons of food. But what, it mean, what, I, what I mean is I don't like it because I'm not getting my way. That's what it really means. And so the Israelites say one of the worst things that you could ever say, and they did not know it. I hate this loathsome, this worthless, this rotten food. Food, mind you, that rained from the heavens. The food rained down from heaven. And every day when they woke up, it was on the ground ready for them to eat. And what they didn't eat was taken away. And the next morning, it would be the same thing all over again. How do you complain about a meal cooked on the ground every single day? Well, whenever you're not getting your way and you prefer slavery to food, you might be a bit of a brat. And then also, the Lord, to show them their sins, sent serpents, that is snakes, that are on fire. In case you didn't get the hint, the, the, the Israelites did not get the hint 
they, they, God did not just send mere serpents, but they were on fire. Uh, just imagine. We don't want to eat this. Here comes a serpent that's on fire in the desert. And you've got nowhere that you can go. And so the serpent, by the way, hello, Garden of Eden, right? To remind them of their sins, the serpents would come on fire. I still can't get over that, that part. What is there to burn on the stink? Sam, you don't want to weigh in on this? <laughs> Sam's really afraid of snakes, like all snakes. Um, they come along and they bite the Israelites, and the Israelites begin to die. How is that not like the Garden of Eden? If you eat of this tree, you will die. And they didn't even know what death was, but they knew that it was bad. And then when, they, when the serpent came along and began uh, twisting the word of God, they ate and they died. It's the exact thing that's happening with the Israelites in Numbers, chapter 21. Satan comes along and bites them. And then they're reminded in their death, in their dying, they are reminded of their sin. We all live in that. We're all Israelites in that. We really understand the damage that we've done as people when sickness looms over our beds or the beds of loved ones. We see the wages of sin and what the servant has done when we are at our sickest, at our most vulnerable. And so, Every day that passes by, you're, and I don't want to bum you out, you're one day closer to your death. That's just time. See, you're dead and you don't even know it yet. And that's where baptism comes in. The fiery serpents that have been sent to you we shall call it the conscience. You know what is right and what is wrong, and yet we choose to continue doing the thing that hurts our Lord. We continue to do the thing that hurts our neighbors. We continue to reject the Lord's Supper, saying exactly like the Israelites, I hate this worthless food. And what you say about this supper, and why this is why I harp so much on doctrine, what you say about this supper is what you say about Jesus. If this supper is worthless, then your Savior is also. And so when we look upon the supper, we're looking at nothing other than what is upon the cross. And for Holy Cross Day, that is what's important. You see, we are dying. Slowly. But the Lord would not let us die. In fact, every day that you get closer to your death is one day closer to eternal life. And that's what Christ gives to us. And that's why I didn't want to bum you out. You're one day closer to your death, but also one day closer to the eternal life that's been won for you by Jesus. And for those who have buried people early, children early, and have seen, walked through sickness, particularly dementia and things like that, that you just, you, 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 you watch them go through pain. And then you, ask, you start to ask yourself questions. Why do bad things happen to good people? And then we simply point, we simply do this and point to the cross. He was perfect. And look what we've done. You see, before the world began, God knew how he would fix this fiery serpent problem. And so he sent his son, Jesus Christ, 
that whoever would look upon the cross in faith would be healed. And then death would never conquer those who believe in him, who believe in him. He, in fact, he even went into hell to tell Satan and all of his minions that you cannot have these people. I am the victor. I have won by the blood that came from my veins. I have won these people unto me. Back off, Satan. There's no fiery serpents around here. There's just the baptized Christians of God who by their conscience repent, receive absolution, the forgiveness of sins. And so the Lord says to Moses here, make a fiery serpent, which shouldn't be too hard, and set it on a pole. Does that not ring of he who knew, who knew no sin became sin for us? See, Christ never sinned, and yet he became sin. And upon that cross, he was nothing more than the Christ, the Son of God, who had become sin and would die for the sake of all of those sins. That's just the reality. He was the fiery serpent that was put on the pole. And when he is lifted up from the ground by his death, he will draw all people unto himself. All men, it says. In the Greek, it uses the term Adam or Adam. I will bring all Adams unto myself. It's a beautiful illustration of the reality that we live in here at Augustana and here at when you leave Augustana. It's this. Yes, you have been bitten by the fiery serpent of Satan and by your own sins have worsened your condition. But understand this, repent of this, receive absolution, no longer, no longer reject the, the very worthy food that is Christ Jesus put on the cross and into your mouth or hand. You see, our Lord knew what he was doing and could have pulled out any time. In fact, he prays to the Lord, let this cup pass from me. But then the Lord, God the Father, says this to Christ, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. That's the incarnation and the resurrection. I have glorified your name by giving him the name Emmanuel, and I will glorify it again. But right in there is the gruesome reality of the cross. And that reality is your reality. And so, as, as far and as fast as we uh, run from these fiery serpents, know that Christ became the true serpent and upon his cross he was lifted up for us that whoever would look upon him with the eyes of faith would live and so live live your life in such a way that bears the name of Christ you are Christians as Luther wrote, little Christ sent out into the world. That's no small thing. That's no small thing. In many cases, you will be the only Christ people ever run into. And so make sure you point them to Scripture and you point them to this church and live your life in such a way that we are forever running away from the fiery snakes. The snakes were on fire. Just I can't, I can't get over that. In case you needed a bigger sign of your sin, snake on fire. And so, Christ does what, he, what, uh, what Eve says he, he would do. What God said to Eve, rather. He crushed the head 
of the serpent. And in that, we find the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. So cast upon, cast your eyes upon the serpent, Christ, who became sin. And come and eat and drink of the merits of that cross, the forgiveness of sin. Thanks be to God, who would not only be humiliated and come in the form of a man, but would also do the impossible. God died. And God the Father also rose, up, rose him up again, that we would have the forgiveness of sins. Because without the resurrection, there is no faith, there is no reality, there is no truth. One must die in order to be raised again. And you have died in the waters of holy baptism. And Christ has raised you up. And now you can call yourself Christian. Little Christ. May we go into the world and do as we have been commanded. Amen.